trust not me. How about Winston Churchill? He said it better than anyone else. He said, the secret of all success. And that's one of those things you want to just turn the page and go, well, Winston Churchill said, the secret of all success is, he said, moving from failure to failure with enthusiasm. <laughs> Think about that. If that's the secret of all success, heck, we can all do that. We all share that in common, but he was right about that. And if you think he was wrong, just think about the folks that were in high school, some of these basketball players, you heard of Michael Jordan, right? I know he's, yes, he's not Kobe, he's not all these new guys. But my generation, Michael, he was cut from his high school basketball team. A failure, embarrassment. Elvis Presley, you remember Elvis? You know Sanjay or David Cook or Argeletto, but Elvis Presley existed before he finished last in his music class, got an F, Elvis Presley. Henry Ford, some of you may be even getting one today as a graduation gift. The only thing I was thinking and paying attention to when I was listening to this speech 23 years ago. Well, Henry Ford went bankrupt not once, but twice, three, four, five times. Ban bankrupt five times. He knew a thing or two about failure. Dr. Seuss, green eggs and ham. This doesn't surprise you. You read it and you go, man, how is this guy successful? <laughs> well, he tried one, two, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, one, two, twenty, three times before his publisher or a publisher decided to say, all right, I'll give it a shot. 23 times he was rejected. Green eggs and ham. I can honestly go on and on. It is the one thing that defines success, failure. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, guys. That was Wayne Gretzky who said that, not me. And by the way, he should have known. He not only made more shots, hockey player, for those who don't know. <laughs> but he also missed more shots than anyone in NHL history. You've got to be willing to fail. So everybody that taught you otherwise, please start to forget what you've been taught. This is incredibly important. Please preserve a sense of being different. Your expression is unique. Nothing drives me more mad than I, when I see people trying to be somebody they're not. Most of those same successful people are successful because they're trying to be themselves, not somebody else. Oprah Winfrey is Oprah because she is different than Phil Donahue who's now off the air, for those that raise their hand, 50 and older. Tiger is Tiger. J-Lo is still J-Lo, I guess. Fitty sense, fitty sense. Who else is out there? We got Tina. I don't know that, that sounds good to me. They know what that is. Preserve a sense of being different. Why do I say that in Marin County? because one of the great residents of this region said it best years ago. And guess what? A quarter century ago, this was, we were playing hacky sack out here, and everyone had their little tie-dye shirts on, all deadheads at the time. And you may know who the Grateful Dead are, still even you today, out here in Marin, or this is not the same school that I graduated from. But Jerry Garcia, said the following. He said, you do not want to be the best of the best. You want to be the only one that does what you do. But now I got a record. And not everyone likes it. But Sarah reminded me of it. Because she reminded me of something that's important. And this I will conclude with. That 50 years ago, it wasn't just people the same sex that couldn't get married. Black people couldn't marry white people in the United States of America 50 years ago. Yeah. See, it was tradition that the races shouldn't mix. And they used biblical arguments. It was in fact not till 1967. Yes, I'm that old. My year of my birth. 1967 though, not 37 or 47. 
before the U.S. Supreme Court said it's outrageous that in the United States of America that we're denying interracial marriage. And there was a very famous decision, Loving versus the State of Virginia. And the judge said the following. The judge said to Mr. Loving, who broke the law by marrying another person who happened to be of another race. The judge said, God, God, sir, God put different races on different continents for a reason. God never wanted the races to mix. 1967. By the way, 70% of Americans supported that judge. 70% of Americans in 1967 were opposed to interracial marriage. So we have made a lot of progress, but I recognize it's still a challenging issue, and I'm not here to beat you up, challenge it, except just to think back, as I imagine you might be now, and how ridiculous those arguments were in the 40s, 50s, and 60s around interracial marriage. And all the assertions that marriage as an institution would end, they made that point very clear back then. And the majority was with them. But that the only thing that's really challenged marriage is Britney Spears. Let's just be honest. It's not those interracial couples. Las Vegas has done more damage to marriage than all those couples that are about to get married next week in the state of California. So, I... I say that because I believe it. And that's the point.